I am the contrarian and this is my world. Hi, my name is Dr. Rajat Chauhan. I am an ultra marathon runner and a sports and exercise medicine doctor. I'm here today to debate about if running shoes are a complete scam. Today there's enough evidence to show that running shoes really are a scam. So suddenly we've been told that you shouldn't be wearing shoes at all when you go running, when you go for a walk for all of those things. Now for years and years, we've only been told a better running shoe, a better athletic shoe, the sports shoe industry, which goes into billions of dollars. And now we're not supposed to wear them at all. Let's get down now and talk to our guest. And I have to tell this before again, Rajat, that one of the strangest things that has happened is I met you and then I met two or three of your clients over the next few days. And I must tell everybody, it seems all his clients are girls. All his clients seem to be marathon runners, and they're all friends of mine that I didn't know even went for a run. So, so is this, I mean, do you, do you discern, do you not take male clients at all? Is that? That's what? the plan. That's, that's, that's yeah. the plan. You're only moving towards it, right? It hasn't happened as yet? I'm very straight. <laughs> okay, all right, great. So about a minute for you to state your case as to why the entire sports shoe industry, according to you, is pretty much a scam. It's a scam because when we started running, you know, when, when you're two years old, three years old, we're not wearing shoes. No one tells us how to do it right. The problem is soon enough, by two or three, we are being forced to wear shoes. Okay. And the foot has the most nerve endings in the whole body. So suddenly it's not in contact with the ground anymore. So we're not grounded anymore. And when you wear a sole, whichever it be, whichever, however thick it is, it's a bit too much. And suddenly our running style is going out of uh, order. Sitting, for example, messes it completely. We're sitting on our butts and not using those good gluteal muscles anymore. So suddenly the whole pattern is different because of wearing a particular shoe. So it doesn't still go to uh, say that, you know, bare feet running is right for everyone to start off with from, you know, from 30 years of wearing shoes and suddenly doing that. No, gradually we do it. It's more the running technique than the shoe itself that matters. You are saying the human body didn't evolve enough to say that today, despite the fact that for many years now we've worn shoes, the human body still gets, its, the foot becomes weak because we wear shoes? That is a good, good point, but there's more to it. I think we are missing the bigger point okay. here. The thicker the sole actually got was not a long time ago. Right. We've been, for the longest time, we've been wearing gladiator kind of shoes, you know, very thin sole shoes, mm -hmm. three to four millimeters. The only reason we were wearing them for the abrasions and whatever, right. you know, from the cuts right. that we would get, right. it was simply, that was the purpose. Okay. Uh, in the mid 70s, early 80s, that's when the soles of the running shoes got thicker and thicker and thicker, like, you know, um, uh, cent uh, inch and a half and stuff like that was. Oh yeah, and all the new, you know, the, it got pumped with gels and airs and a hundred other different things, right? Yeah. So you're saying that's where the real Very destruction recent. started. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. So it's not so much just the shoe. It's about that, you know, the gadgetry thing that actually happened to the shoe. That is the problem the with technology it. The technology of that happened. sports shoes, yeah. right? Okay, let me understand the other part of it. Mm. You use the word technique is far more important. Mm. What do you mean by that? So there's a technique of running which is right and wrong. I mean, I know there's a technique of running, mm. but the way the foot strikes mm. is more important? It is. So it's like your technique, again. So it's not like, you know, there is one right technique and there's, you know, everything else is wrong. It's not like that. It's like a fingerprint. Uh, all of us have a different way to move. But we all so have first, a fingerprint, right? That's right. You'll what happens immediately when I start running bare feet? What's different? So you'll be landing softly on the ground. Okay, so even without me saying, hey, this is the right technique, you'll still, what you'll do, at least soft. Okay, you'll land soft on it because you're scared you can get hurt. Uh, so what's, what's happening is their landing uh, on the heel is softer when you're running. So again, the same thing. When you're wearing a shoe, and the first thing that you hear is a lot of this happening. A guy who's wearing no shoes and then running, it's a lot more softer. So the impact over a period of time. And you yourself are making sure because you are kind of aware and afraid that you're going to hurt yourself. Yes. So you, you're, you're, you're cushioning yes. your own self. Yes. Wouldn't that spoil my technique? Wouldn't no. I be a slower runner? You'll be a softer runner. What's happening otherwise, you're getting too stiffer because you're trying to make that long stride happen. What you're saying is that the minute a person takes his shoe off, even if I was to run 20 feet yeah. to train myself, I would start running differently automatically? You would, you would. Having said that, uh, soon enough, there will be pains. And you mentioned stress factor. What happens is, it's like, you know, those martial artists, when they're hitting the wall repeatedly, initially there will be micro fractures happening. But if you keep doing it, the body is reacting very well. It's adapting. It, it learns. It's, a, it's a supposed to be an intelligent body. So it's learning very quickly how to respond to that pressure on the body. 
Same happens there. If you haven't increased the mileage too much suddenly and the speed suddenly, your body's reacting and those bones are getting stronger, the muscles are responding. One of the things, again, that happens, now I'm pretty much going against myself here, one of the things that happen is there are a lot of calf pain that comes along in people who are doing it because what you're doing now is you're almost never resting your heel. heel so the calf is not resting enough. Now this is a big shift. Uh, so your calves start hurting, the very first thing is that, or the shin pain, that comes first or second. Okay. Okay? So we just need to be gradual so with you, that. So, so this whole talk that they have about heel strike and the impact of a heel strike on the body is three to five times more than when you're actually the, the right. foot striking from the front. That's right. Is that why they say that yeah. you'll get lesser knee pain eventually if you run yeah. bare feet? Yeah. So again, you know, doing this versus this. I mean, as much as we try with a midfoot or a forefoot, there's not a lot of pressure or uh, even the sound that comes is not a lot. Here, it's, you know, it's a lot more. Uh, okay. So right away, there's a lot more, a lot lesser pressure happening on the knee. Having said that, initially, there might be more pain because your calf is playing up, your, you know, the foot, the way it is. So it's, it's eventually, it's kind of getting into the right place. You just need to increase your distance and speed gradually. The biggest mistake people make is they suddenly want to do the same distance they were doing with the shoe. They want to do without shoe now. Okay, now two or three things that immediately come to my mind is, won't I cut myself badly? I mean, one is I'll train myself to run. What about the skin, that, that beautiful fair, skin fair that I have? Fair. Same analogy that I gave about, you know, the martial artist hitting the wall. So one is, if imagine there are no glasses on the ground and no, all that, that means stuff. my feet will become extremely rough and hard. Would, exactly. Like, you know, labor. Look at their palms versus mine, yeah, right? Okay, so I think you just right now lost 70% mm -hmm. of the audience that were women out there. They won't accept the fact that their feet look like a terrible mess of hard, dark mass. Uh, it would not look terrible, hard mass, but definitely there will be a hardening of I mean, it has to be hard be... enough for me to be able yeah. to take the friction of my feet hitting a definitely. surface 20,000 times in a run. So my feet will change it, it dramatically. Would. It would. The labor, as I said, yes, it'll get firmer from there. How ugly would it look? No, I think it's not so much about that. Yes, it'll become a lot more firmer. Uh, they will become firmer ladies. Is running bad for the knees? Bare feet running, is it bad for the knees or good? It is better for the knees if done gradually. Eventually? Yes. If you learn the technique, yes. if you actually have knee pain, you'll actually be better? You will become better over a period of time. What about joints? Right? Again, same thing because the less impact. So it will eventually get better, yes. Okay, all right. I'm going to now do two or three quick fire sure. questions. Somewhere somebody is saying, this is a typical conspiracy theory yeah. against shoes. And it's the kind of fad that is thrown out. Shoes have been there forever and ever and ever. Yeah. Just a small fad. Ten years later, you yourself will say, mm. no, 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 that is all wrong. Mm. Wear shoes. Uh, no, actually, I've gone the reverse. So ten years ago, I used to sit with a video camera in a park videoing people saying, how are the feet rolling? Do you need a supinator or a pronator kind of a shoe, right. control or a cushion shoe? I was the one who was doing that. Uh, That's what I'm saying. So you were wrong 10 years back. Yes, I was. You could be wrong 10 years later. No, I was wrong to an extent. So I was kind of fo trying to fix it just by the shoe. I wasn't talking too much about the technique then. I, I'm saying even that is to, uh, holds true today, but the point is the, technol the technique of running is a far bigger thing. I'm going to split this show into two. For the first time ever, the contrarian becomes part one and part two. I'm going okay. to throw you a challenge. Okay. Okay. Because at this present moment, I'm convinced about the science and the medical technology behind what you've said. Yeah. I'm just not convinced, like I said, that I believe in okay. everything that has been said today. Okay. So here's what we're going to do. Mm. I will give you three or four subjects. Okay. The next week that comes about, yeah. we're going to have these people work with you. Okay. None of them will ever have run bare feet. Okay. I'm going to find somebody who doesn't run at all. Mm. I'm going to find somebody who's an expert sprinter. Mm. I'm going to find somebody who's an expert marathon runner. Right. People like that. Mm. I'm going to find out what they really will be experiencing. We're going to talk to the kind of people mm. that do this and don't do this. Mm. I'd love to see this in a real life example because this, unfortunately, is at the end of it, just you and me talking. Is that a challenge accepted? Yeah. We could come back and revisit after eight weeks or oh, yeah. something that's, like that. That's, that's worthwhile. So the challenge has been accepted and there will be quite a few people working with Rajat right now to see if it's really true. The sport shoe industry is at a complete scam. Is bare feet running actually better for you? Do tune in next week to find out what really happens when we had those three people join Rajat. See you next week. Thank you so much, Rajat. Thanks, Thanks sir. a lot. Thank you.
です。